Have you ever felt like you had imposter syndrome? Imposter syndrome is characterized as somebody who is, you know, they're an expert in what they do. They're very knowledgeable in what they do. They have a proven track record, and yet they still feel somehow like they're an imposter or like they're a fraud. And, and one day people are going to find out. I'm not a fan of the term imposter syndrome because the word syndrome implies an illness, a sickness, a disease. And I don't think you're sick. There's nothing wrong with you if you have imposter syndrome. However, I know the feelings of imposter syndrome that, you know, those, those feelings of inadequacy or like you're not good enough or that you're a fraud or somehow people are going to find out that maybe you don't know everything. Um, I know that, that is a real thing. I just think we should call it something else. Like maybe the lack of confidence. Now, tell me if you've had this happen before where you're talking to someone who doesn't know a lot about what they're supposed to know about or, or they're not an expert on a subject. And yet, um, with a little bit, just a little bit of knowledge that they have, they have an overinflated sense of confidence and they feel like they are the expert. You know, maybe you've had those conversations around the family dinner table with a relative who, yeah, they think they know more on a subject that you actually are the expert in. And, and you can't argue with them because they have such an inflated sense of confidence. It is overwhelming. And they, they won't even listen to what you have to say because they, they think that they know all of the things that they actually do not know. Now, in learning, there are four stages. There's the unconscious incompetence. That's when you don't know what you don't know. And you've probably heard it said before, ignorance is bliss. And then there's, there's conscious incompetence, which is where you know that there are things you do not know. And that's a pretty uncomfortable spot to be in. And then we get to conscious competence where you know, you know what you know, you know, you, you know it, you know it consciously. And then there's unconscious competence, which is where you know it so well, you don't consciously think about it. You just know. You just know it. So a couple of scientists, Dunning and Kruger, they did a study on, on this bias. And it's now called the, the Dunning-Kruger effect. So this came out of um, David Dunning and Justin Kruger. And there were two social psychologists who, who described this phenomenon. When you have people who don't know, who think that they're experts, and they will boldly proclaim that they know something that they, they don't know. And, and then you have the people who are the experts who are, you know, like they're the, they feel like they don't know enough. So they were curious about this phenomenon and they started studying it and they did an experiment where they had 65 participants and they had them rate how funny different jokes were. And, and some of them were exceptionally poor at determining what other people would find funny. And yet those same subjects describe themselves as being an excellent judge of humor. And, and so they, they studied this and they studied it in multiple different ways. And what they came to understand is that people with the lowest performance level, people who are incompetent in an area have an overinflated sense of confidence and they have this, this bias that they know all of these things um, because they don't know enough to know that they do not know. So with a limited range of information, they think they know all there is to know on a subject. So they're in the, the unconscious incompetence. They don't know that they don't know. So they think that they do know. And it creates this bias where they think that they're the expert on something. And on the other side of the spectrum, the, the people who are the high performers, what they found is that they would rate themselves as a lot lower in all the areas they tested. So in all the different areas they looked at, and they looked at you know, logic and, and I believe grammar and humor and different, different areas, what they found is that the people who were the least competent, the bottom percentile, 
they thought they rated themselves as above average. And the people who actually were above average, the top performers rated themselves as average or below. So we have these cognitive biases and, and who has it? Who, who is subject to the Dunning-Kruger effect? All of us. We're all subject to this, this bias. So but here's where it can be kind of dangerous. And I'm seeing this a lot on social media. You probably are too, is with everything happening in the world right now, there are people who have a little bit of information and they think they know more than the people who have a lot of the information. People who have studied, you know, studied these, these things for their entire lifetime. People who have devoted their careers to studying science and medicine and, and they know things. And then you have people who, you know, at very, at the very best, you know, might, might have completed science in high school, thinking that they know more than the experts. And you can find this, I mean, that's just one example, but you can find this in multiple examples. You can find this, you know, in music, you can find it in philosophy, you can find it in any area of life, this Dunning-Kruger effect, it's a bias and we are all subject to it. It's when you, you don't know enough to know that you don't know. And the people who do know enough, the experts, they're subject to it because they know enough to know that they don't know everything. They know enough, they know so much to know that there's more to learn and to discover. And so they start to feel like, oh, I don't know enough. I'm an imposter. I don't know everything there is to know on the subject. And I've spent my life studying it. I've spent years devoted to it. I have education in this. And there's still so much more because they understand the richness and the complexity of the subject where the people who are on the incompetent side don't understand the complexity. So they look at it from a very simplistic point of view, and then they think they understand all there is to understand. And so I just find this really fascinating and, you know, and, and working with high performers, I see this as if you have imposter syndrome, what we call imposter syndrome, that's not actually a syndrome, but it's what it's called. So if you are suffering from those feelings of imposter syndrome, but that's probably a good sign that you know a lot more than you think, you know, you know, 